Hello everyone. Happy Labor Day. It is Monday, the first day in uh, September. It's Labor Day. Worked my way through the Sunday and the Saturday. I'm all uh, never realized how many tourists there are until it's a holiday weekend. And I'm tired. You know, it's one of those mornings you wake up, oh gosh, you know, it's like Groundhog Day. But I only have about, August, September, about 70 more days until I get a day off. But that's, that's life. I'm also looking at, this is the last Labor Day I'll ever have to work here. Because I'm facing retirement. Sort of. I'm still going to work until I can max out my Social Security. And uh, when I move from here, I have no idea what I'm going to do. You know, I'll have a mortgage. I'll have all the same bills. And I don't have a job lined up. But, you know, you have to trust yourself. It's important. You need, to, you need to trust yourself. I'm thinking, as I sometimes do, occasionally, once in a while, is that when you get to a certain point of life on the medicine wheel, you know, you go through the potential of your life to your youth, to your, the robustness of your 30s and 40s, too. Let's face it, you know. The end is coming, but I'm not saying that is a bad thing. I'm saying that is you put together this painting of life, you know, with all the different colors and the different textures and the different symphonies of activities that you have partaken. It's been a bunch of them. And when you start getting towards the sunset of your life, by the way, you know, the, the plant that represents the West the later years is sage, you know. What do you call a wise person sage? And so I'm I'm putting together all the lessons that I've learned in life so I can, as I always try to do, pass them on to the younger set. Mattatool and Matt, for example. And I'll, I'll get into your question that you asked me through an email, Matt. And, you know, what I like about the primitive community, bow community, is that like all the questions, the answers, the discussions, they're family friendly. There's nothing to be ashamed of. It's, you should be proud of all of it because, you know, we are grounded in being human. What it means to be a human, being able to put stuff together and um, gather your own food and protect yourself. Self-defense is unfortunately lost in many major cities, but that is part of being human, protecting you and your own. I'm putting together like a, what has my life meant? And should I regret that decision I made earlier or not? And, you know, this has to do a lot with it. The E4 rank, the E4 mafia. There's more of us than there are of you, if you're a captain or a staff sergeant or whatever. So, you know, bring it on. Our gang is bigger, the E4 mafia. And for the longest time, I had regrets. I, I turned down schools, I turned down OCS, I turned down so many things, tank commander school, all this stuff, you know, because I wanted to stay where I was. And that has a a one-to-one -one correspondence to my ability to do this job, because it takes a certain psychology to manage this facility. And what I am what I have been for the past 27 years was an E4. I'm not a private, you know, although I will clean toilets and stuff like that, the outhouse and stuff, do the, the grunt work, it's private. I'm not a non-commissioned officer, and so I'm not sitting down just planning, you know, and then dispersing that information, delegating it to everyone. I am the E4 in this job. I'm proud of it. I, you can approach it in many ways. I, I admit, I've learned the fine art, they call it shamming, of looking busy to a point and being an E4. In many ways, many times, you're kind of under the radar. They're not watching out for you like they would like in E1 through E2, and then to some degree in E3, you get a little bit more respect. You know, and you're not an NCO, so you don't have to attend all those meetings and deal with all the, the politics of it. And then on a 
real scale just run everything, whether or not it's this or the other thing. You're, I'm just an E4 here, you know? I'm competent in my job. And I can pass between, you know, the lower levels and the upper levels. You get to a certain point where you are respected because you can perform well, you know your job. I, in fact, there's been many cases where I knew how to do a job better as a member of the E4 Mafia than people above me. I was better at doing things. And so I had, as many of you who had the similar rank, who have a job like mine, you know, there's a connection here, the perfect condition to, to be happy. It's kind of a Buddhist thing, really. Once you release that need to rise in rank or authority, life is good. <laughs> you know, I, I can do stuff, but I could also make it appear that I'm doing stuff. You get my drift, fellow E4s. But yeah, I'm facing another day of tourism. I've never mastered that. Didn't need to. I just go. That's how an E4 would do it. Pardon me, I'm going to step out of frame because I want to be family friendly. Skull straight is an E4 kind of a thing. It's not fancy like wintergreen. It's just serves its purpose. It does its job well without the bells and the whistles. Okay, Matt. Now, I, I, I receive a great amount of joy when I can help some, when I can help somebody learn how to make their first successful bow. Matt is bringing it to a new level in that you not only want to make bows, you've already learned that, but you want to teach other people in your community, native community in the Manitoulin Islands, to make bows and, and gain other skills of being human. You know, so my hat's off to you. That gives me an Im immense amount of pride. You give me pride, Matt. Thank you. I appreciate it. Now, starting... A primitive archery supply business that has also that component of uh, uh, teaching others, the youth, you know, and us old people that want to get into that. It's wonderful. You have now achieved the completion of the first part of your business plan. You know what you want to do. I would, before I say anything more, I'd have to say, Matt, you need to trust yourself. Because you are fully capable of doing this. And I've seen it with the development of your bow styles. Is that you will ask me questions. And then you will go off and do your own thing. And surpass by a huge degree those skills that you feel that I passed along to you. Because you've, you've got it, you know. As far as the nuts and the bolts, because I've thought about doing this too, I'm you know, a potential job, although I've had such a very weird trip to get to this point, to sit at this picnic table, to think about opening that gate and let the tourists of a Labor Day in. Now, I've got varied amount of skills, and I probably could start my own bow business. That's true. But I would not necessarily just count on my words. I would, I would seek out the advice of somebody that actually has a... a primitive bow business, you know, and, and supply business. And you need to be honest. This person is honest. Of course, I'm talking about Mike Yancey at Pine Hollow Longbows. And Mike, if you're watching us, I apologize that like I'm volunteering you to ask, answer questions. But you know, that's kind of in the creed of the Primitive Bow Society is we're here to answer questions. Um, Mike is an ethical person. He'll never and I'm not going to lay this on anybody's doorstep. It may or may not have happened in the past. He's not going to trick people. He's not going to like shoot an elk or a moose with a rifle and then tip it over on its side and stick an arrow you know, in his chest kind of a thing to, to promote his business. Mike wouldn't do that. He doesn't need to do that. You're also good, in fact, Matt, because you are a 
tremendous hunter with a bow. And so, you know, when you build your business and have your website, you can have all these pictures, including take a snapshot of you holding that rainbow trout on an arrow. I mean, that is, that is next level archery. I'm going to go shoot tr trout in the stream. You know, you're good at that. But I would go to Mike for some advice as far as the practical. How did you get started, Mike? Another good thing is you need to promote yourself, right? You need to be known in the primitive bow society. And I have I think I've wanted you to do this in the past, but seriously, you want to start your business, you need to do this. You need to consider being a contributing writer to Primitive Archer magazine. Your story is interesting. You are First Nations. You live on Manitoulin Island. In some respects, you are a a substance hunter, you know, you have the ability to just go out and like shoot and eat stuff. You're an interesting guy. You want to start like this learning center for the primitive arts amongst your people. That is interesting. That is interesting. And you have the communication skills to be an interesting writer. So right off the bat, you get advice from Mike the Man Yancey. You, uh, again, because he's connected with Primitive Archer Magazine, you write an article, you're going to have huge cred. You are going to be Matt and Matt, you know, uh, the idol of all. You need to think about marketing. It, every, you could make the best paperclip in the world, and if you can market that, you would become a millionaire. Get my drift? Everything is marketing. Everything is exposure in a good way, and all that would add to it. Now, from the nuts and the bolts, of course, you need to get a good bandsaw. You need to have a, a decent table saw, you know, with a ripping bench where it, you know, there's the saw and then it smooth transition to a ripping bench. You need a jigsaw. You know, you know what tools you need. I would also say get a good belt sander. That can speed things up, too. Come visit me sometime. You know, hang out when you get a chance. I'll yap. I'll yap your ears off. You know, but I, when I get the energy to write, it's even a drain. And it's not because of I don't like the questions and I don't like conversing with people. But man, I mean, I just when I open the gates here, I'm going to be talking to tourists until I close the gates at sunset. You know, it's a long haul. Day after day after day after day after day. 240 straight days. And now Labor Day, it's been a little tad over five months. Like five months and three or four days. You know, I'm, I'm pretty much beat. But I'm not an administrator. I'm not just a laborer. I'm an E4. We need a creed. The fours need a creed. You know, we're just, we just do stuff. We don't want any more than the ability just to do stuff and to hide out in the closet once in a while. Well, that is all. I have said enough. And Matt, yes, um, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to answer your email. But pretty much, you know, I just said everything. Get the advice of somebody that has actually done it. Seriously, sit down and think about contacting Primitive Archer. Or, you know what? I'm going to volunteer you. I'm going to contact for you and say, I know a guy. Um, and get the ball started for you. And then, you know, you're, you're, you're a smart, capable person. You'll figure out the shop tools, you know. And if you need to get another shop tool, I need this to do this, you'll figure it out. You're a smart guy. Trust yourself more. I know you trust yourself. I know that you're confident in your your uh, abilities. Be more. You just tell yourself right now, I can do this. I've got all the pieces necessary. I just need to put that puzzle together. I'll, I'll do my best to help. A lot of it is on you. You know, it's like kicking a little bird out of a nest. You either fly or don't, but I'm pretty confident your wings are strong. Boy, I honestly don't want to stop talking to you guys and start talking to tourists. There's so many of them. They never stop. 
That is all.